Hey, so, um, I was just about to lay down and take a little nap while Jonathan is napping, and, um, I just felt like the Lord nudged me to share something with you that I was just sh talking to my husband about. Um, I don't know if you, if you remember just recently, I did a video where I was talking about, uh, the Lord speaking to me, this, the the scripture, um, I believe it's from Micah, uh, the first part of the verse where it says there's instructions. God is giving instructions to man and he says to love mercy, to, to do justly, love mercy, uh, and walk humbly with your God. And, um, and I shared with you how, um, I had an experience um, a, a throne room experience where I was, where in the spirit, uh, I was transported to the throne room. I'll just say it that way. And, um, and I experienced the, I began to feel the, the fact that God loves mercy, how much he loves mercy. And it, it overwhelmed my heart. It was like, it was in that moment, it was like, the fact that God loves mercy, he does justly, but he loves mercy, um, was like etched, engraved upon my heart. And, um, and then there's been two moments recently when in a time of prayer, I sensed it was not long after that, where he said he loves mercy. And, and the, the sense I had on that particular day was that he was working with these people who are perpetrating um, evil in our land and executing crimes against hu humanity and threatening the future of our nation and and um, and and it was like I was aware that he was letting me know that he's still in the love mercy part that he's. He's working with them and working with them and, and that his desire is for them to, was for them to, uh, yield to his dealings. And, um, and then a few days later in my time with him, I felt that something had shift. I felt a definite shift and I heard him speak times up and there was, but there was not this this exultant kind of feeling like, aha, I'm going to get you now. There was a set, there was a bit of a sadness to it. It was like he was going to do justly, but there was no pleasure. There was no pleasure in what he was going to need to do in order to do, to execute justice. Um, and, um, and then, uh, today, so just a few days later, um, is when I, when he spoke to me, when I heard the rumbling in the spirit, which I was, I went into more detail talking to Ted about it. And I said, imagine what it might sound like if there were 5,000 big horses that were charging full speed ahead, heavy hooves on the ground, just pounding the ground, five war horses, 5,000, not five. <laughs> 5,000, um, from maybe a mile away. Imagine what that might sound like. And that's what I heard in the spirit. And then, and then, um, and then I heard the Lord say, um, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And, but as I was, as he was speaking that to me, though I felt this, this feeling of, vengeance is mine and I'm going to execute justice here. And he was, it was the whole, you know, large and in charge God, like you might imagine and what everybody wants him to do. Um, what I was just explaining to Ted that I want, that I felt like he wanted me to express to you is that, is that, in these moments where I'm hearing the Lord and I'm sensing from, from him that, 
that he's extended mercy and extended mercy. And there, there came a point where they've crossed a threshold and, and now it's time where he's going to execute justice. Um, that, that love of mercy, listen to me very carefully, that love of mercy in his heart never goes away. It's, it's, there's always that element, that little element that's always present of, I wish I didn't have to do this. And so I, what I want you, what I feel like he wants you to understand is one of the ways that you can discern when you're listening to someone and they are supposedly speaking for God, because there's a lot of that, there's a lot of people online now who are supposedly speaking for God. Um, you need to listen, not just to the words that they're saying, but listen for the heart of God. Listen for the heart of God. God doesn't act. God doesn't act outside of his heart. He doesn't do one thing, but feel something different. He, he acts. Everything he does is in keeping with his nature and he is consistent in his nature. So though he does justly, and though the time has come where, where he is going to execute justice, his love of mercy, the desire of his heart to show mercy, that this is what his desire has been, is to show mercy, that they not get their due recompense for their evil deeds. That his, he's been, he's, he has for, he's, the forbearance of God is, is a thing because he loves mercy so much. And I can assure you that however much you think you understand that God loves mercy, he loves it more than that. And so when you're listening to somebody give a word of the Lord, um, listen for the heart of God. And if there's no evidence, if what you hear in a pro pro prophetic word of God's bringing justice is nothing but this, but this, aha, my big God is about to get you and you're going down and, 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 and you scum, God is gonna, God is gonna strike you down. And, and even, even, even from, from members of the body of Christ recently talking about other members of the body of Christ who they are labeling as false prophets and there's this haughtiness and there's this this cold element there's a a coldness and a um an insensitivity a lack of com com compassion or mercy is is in in their words it they are they are almost it's almost like they're salivating for the just god to 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 bring justice and 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 get them god get them god so if you have been confused with all the voices that are talking I can't even talk about this without crying. If you've been confused and God, how do I, how do I know who to listen to? Who's right? Who should I be listening to? Listen for the heart of God. If there is no compassion, if there is no evidence in their words or in the feel behind their words of a God who loves mercy, and if it's just a wrath and, and God's, God's going to get them, shut them off. Walk away. Do not pay them any mind because they are not speaking from the heart of God. They are not representing God. Even if some of the words that they're saying are accurate, the spirit behind it is not a true representation 
of your Father, our righteous God, who loves mercy. And what you need and what we need in the body of Christ is not just words from God. We need to understand his heart. We need to be acquainted with his nature. So that's the admonishment that I felt like the Lord wanted me to give you today. Um, it'll help you to cut through the all the voices and the the murkiness that some of you have been experiencing, the the wondering and, and lack of clarity and I don't know who to listen to. This one says they've heard from God and that one had this dream and that one had this vision and and listen for his heart. He loves mercy. And even when he has to execute justice, because he righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne, he can't be a righteous God and forbear forever. He can't be a righteous God and never do justly. It is required for him to be true to his nature, for him to do justly. But he loves mercy. And even when he does justice, when he executes justice, the love of mercy never goes away. It is, it is running parallel. It is like, like running parallel. There's always that element of, I wish I didn't have to do this. Why? Because he loves them. Because he loves them. Because he formed them in their mother's wombs. He loves them. Jesus died for them. Jesus shed his blood for them like he did you. They matter to him. They aren't just, they aren't just their evil deeds in God's eyes. They are his creation and he loves them. And so he takes no pleasure in having to do things that will, re that, that will deal with their unrighteous deeds. <sighs> Love you guys. I hope that helps you. I think that it will. I think that it will. All right. Talk to you guys later.